All right. Uh, thank you for joining us uh, today. Um, you know, good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Uh, we know uh, we have quite a few people from quite a few places in the world, and uh, we know your time is valuable. So we really appreciate you taking uh, the next hour today to uh, learn about .NET New Professional Edition and some of the features that it can that can help uh, add value to your organization. Uh, before we get started, though, uh, I do want to do a couple pieces of uh, you know kind of housekeeping, so to speak. I want to make sure everything's working okay. So the first step is um, I'm going to ask you to use the control panel that uh, is the GoToMeeting software. It's going to be docked usually on the right side of your screen. Um, and it has a nice raise your hand feature. So the first thing I want you to do is if you can hear my voice, uh, please use that raise your hand feature just to let us know that you can hear the sound of it. Excellent. Thank you so much. The next thing is I want to make sure that you can see the slides okay. If all you can see on here is a nice screen and blue slide with a tree right in the middle, um, please let me know that uh, you can see that all right. Raise your hand one more time for me. All right. Thank you so much for participating in that. I appreciate you. All right. So uh, the next thing is there's going to be hopefully tons of questions from everybody uh, you know, throughout the duration of today's webinar. And if you have any questions whatsoever, please feel free to ask them using that same control panel you're just raising your hand in. There's a nice questions panel in there. Um, you know, it's not really a chat box, but it's, it's an area where you can ask any questions at all. And all the questions that we can get to at the end of today's webinar, we will absolutely respond to uh, live right here on this broadcast. However, if, there, if we do not have enough time or um, you know, if your question is something that should, is going to take a long time to respond to, uh, we will go ahead and answer you directly via email within the next 48 hours. Um, now, that being said, if you have any specific kind of you know, uh, questions that you would like to ask, uh, you know, we also have an area on our website that's specific to kind of a question and answer type of model called the Community Exchange. So you can go in there, ask a question, and people will give you an answer. And it's at answers.nuke.com. Now, before we uh, actually get into the uh, product demonstration, I, I am going to just give you a little bit of background about .NET Nuke, so bear with me as I spend the next uh, 10 minutes or so uh, giving you that background. Now, um, if you're not familiar with what .NET Nuke is and, and you know, kind of you know, our model and, and where we fit within your organization, uh, you know, this is kind of what the opportunity is for you. Um, if you remember back to the 2000, you know, year 2000, Everything out there on the web was very much static or brochure-centric. It was very read-only. There wasn't a whole lot of dynamic things that were going on there. In fact, anything that was dynamic was usually done uh, by uh, having many talented programmers on staff and doing some very technical things in order to make these things happen. Um, there weren't very many you know, e-commerce sites or anything like that in the year 2000. But more importantly, in the year 2000, it was very difficult to know what the next 10 years would bring in terms of you know, what's important to your website or even how important your website would become. Uh, so it was very difficult to determine how important social or mobile or e-commerce even would be in the next 10 years. And then not only that, you know, once it becomes important, uh, how do you as an organization respond to that? How much effort and time and investment do you need to put into your web properties in order to make sure that those are there? You know, these are things that today you're going to find in .NET Nuke. Uh, that you can just you know, basically just configure and it's working for you. And you have a working e-commerce, social, or mobile website within minutes or days instead of months or years. Now that's kind of like that, that's kind of where we we sit uh, in, in order to help you. Um, you know, we have this. We, we basically think of the next 10 years and we put this into the product so that way you don't have to worry about it. We allow you to be agile by thinking about what's coming in the next 10 years and what's going to be important to you. What do you need in order to stay competitive, to stay relevant, to stay ahead of the learning curve, to stay ahead of, of the technology curve. And so that's where we come into place is we offer you a platform where not only can you integrate and build things that are important to you and have a website presence that's completely branded, but you're going to have features and abilities that are built in that are fully baked into the platform where you can just configure it and move forward. You don't have to you know, spend uh, you know, many thousands of dollars uh, you know, building these features. We're going to have them for you and you're going to be able to just configure them and move on. So kind of talking to that, you know, we, we're all feeling the pressure from all kinds of directions today, you know, not just in our, in our, our website or our web space, but, you know, we have all kinds of, um, of challenges that we have to face on a daily basis, you know, not the least of which being uh, the competition or the complexity of the things that are coming on a daily basis in relation to the technology and the 
the uh, learning curves that we have to stay relevant in today's marketplace as far as our website is. And, and the other thing is the content explosion. You know, content is all over the place today. So how do you manage all that? How do you have a single place to manage all that content and then uh, be able to uh, have an affordable way to respond to that, to stay productive in today's world? So this is kind of, you know, we're, we're, this is where we come in to, you know, hopefully save the day for you. We allow your business to be agile. You know, we know how, how much you struggle. We know how difficult it is to keep up with these latest trends as well as your own uh, business goals. You know, so this is fast and unpredictable change is something that we are here to help you with. And so what we have is a platform that allows you to be adaptive very, very quickly and affordably, have the greatest return on investment, so that way you can very quickly and easily stay relevant, up to date, and in touch. We're here to save you time and money. Now, as far as what .NET Nuke is, you know, we are the number one web content management system on the Microsoft stack. Uh, you know, we know that for many reasons. You know, we've been honored uh, to have many, many awards, including the Inc. 500 last year. We're on the Inc. list again this year. Uh, we have over 2,000 customers in, in you know, less than three years. Uh, we, uh, so what these things mean to you is that there is no, you know, there's no uh, end in sight to the growth here. You're going to have a platform that's going to be growing with you, that's going to be constantly growing to help you get to the next level. Um, kind, you know, kind of along the same vein. You know, this this product has been around for 10 years now. Uh, next month it'll be 10 years, and so you know, in this in this time, we have over 700,000 known production websites. We have an ecosystem that has over 10,000 extensions there, where you can just uh, download them and install them and use them. So you know, 80 percent or more of the features that you need in your website project are going to come out of the box. The next 10 to 15 percent are definitely going to be able to come out of the ecosystem. So you're going to be able to download things, install them, and move on, just like you do on your phone. You can install them right from your website. Uh, and then there's an, a, there's a, um, a community, a vast community that is the .NET New community, where there's over a million members in that community worldwide. And so what all this kind of boils down boils down to, and what this means to you as an organization, is that you're never going to be without resources. Whether it's a partner network, whether it's a community network, whether it's a, knowing that other people are doing or have done what you're trying to do, you are not alone. Um, there is a vast number of resources, whether it's through us or through community, so that way you will always have a place to turn to. <clears throat> now, as far as who our customers are, the, the great thing about Dr. Nuke is not that, hey, look, look at all these pretty logos. I think I've heard of these. There are a ton of companies that use .NET Nuke for mission critical and business critical applications, and these are just a few. You know, the, the whole point I want to kind of get across here is not that you know people like True Value or or Sears or Hilton are using .NET Nuke, but what I do want to point out here is the vast number of verticals that you see here. There is virtually no use case that .NET Nuke can't be used in. You can use .NET Nuke in virtually any use case that there is, any scenario where you need a website you can use .NET to fit that need. So if it's microsites, your public-facing website, your intranets, your extranets, you know, some custom application, uh, we're here to offer you a platform that, that serves your needs and allows you to empower the content owners that are in your organization. And uh, so that being said, not only do we fit pretty much any vertical, we fit pretty much any size organization. So you could be a five employee company that uses .NET Nuke for uh, you know, some sort of web-based application, some maybe software as a service application, or you can be somebody as large as Time Warner Cable who has at least 47,000 people in their organization and they use .NET Nuke as well. Now I just want to go over, uh, we had a third party organization called Tech Validate do a, a survey of our customers, so I just want to give you a couple highlights real quick. Uh, so one of the uh, highlights here is that 95% of our customers uh, ch uh, said that .NET Nuke improved their efficiency in organization. Um, so that's a pretty substantial number. It's well above the industry average. Uh, kind of along the, the, the same uh, idea here, you know, DNN customers that save time and money, 94% responded that we save them time and money. So uh, you know, that, that's, this is not our survey. This is Tech Validate survey. So that was, that's, once again, well above industry uh, average. And then finally, .NET Nuke was able to help people deliver their website projects faster. 81% responded uh, that they were able to deliver their websites faster. Um, in fact, we have a case study on our website where one organization that spins out websites on a regular basis, uh, they said that they saved uh, over 600% of the amount of time that it used to take to build a website. Uh, so that's a pretty substantial number. 
you know, what that all kind of wraps up into is that you know, we know that your website is your most important business asset. And so we're right there in the middle helping you protect that asset, helping you be able to respond to the changing uh, uh, things in the um, industry and, and how to present your website and your content and get everything managed properly by the people that need to manage them. Now, when we talk about what .NET Nuke is for you specifically, we come to you with two solutions. Uh, two solutions that hopefully will solve all your problems. Uh, so the first one is your end users, the people in your organization, will be able to create content with very little or no training at all. Um, it's not uncommon for people to be able to just get a log, get a login, and get the appropriate permissions, and you just let them go, and they're able to just do what they need to do. Um, you know, there's many organizations that are able to do that today. And the other side of the coin is their developers. So it's, .NET Nuke isn't just a website, it's also a web platform. So um, platform meaning you can build things onto it. Um, it has true extensibility. Uh, so you know, your developers are able to very quickly build web, web applications because they don't have to do all the, the you know, monotonous things and the time-consuming things that are typically done in web applications. Uh, maybe changing core code or, or you know, deciding how to build authentication or how am I going to secure certain pages. These are things that content editors take uh, ownership of. So your developers, all they have to worry about is the business logic. And so that saves them an incredible amount of time. Now, kind of giving you a visual of, of what this all means to you, um, you know, .NET Nuke is an application that sits on the Microsoft web stack. Uh, so it does require Windows Server. Uh, it's, it's an ASP.NET application, so um, you know, it's a, right now, as far as, uh, as of today, we released uh, version 7 of .NET Nuke, and so, ASP, uh, so we do require .NET version 4.0, uh, and then .NET sits on that stack, and it has native support for uh, SQL Server, and so that's uh, 2005 or newer, and you will be able to uh, connect to any database that you would like because it does have a database provider, so you're not limited there. Now, as far as the architecture, we can dive into .NET Nuke itself. Those two solutions I was just talking about come in the way of the web content management system and the web application framework. So the content management system portion is where your end users and your visitors would see on a daily basis. So your end users that log in to edit content, this is the part that they would be engaged with on a daily basis. And then your developers and designers would primarily be using the web application framework side of things. And so they would be you know, integrating with your backend systems or integrating with some third-party system or you know, installing new extensions such as blogs or, or quorums or, or whatever, um, you know, building new designs that are, are completely encompassing your branding. Uh, so th these are the areas where, where we're going to dive a little bit more into and we're going to see the web content management system in a few moments. So uh, just to give you some background about how .NET Nuke can serve your needs, uh, .NET Nuke is what's known as a multi-tenant uh, um, platform. So what that means to you is you can host as many different websites off of a single installation of .NET Nuke as you want. Uh, as an example, as an example, uh, True Value Hardware has uh, an instance of .NET Nuke that runs over 3,000 websites. Uh, that's a pretty large number of websites. And so .NET Nuke doesn't limit you on the number of websites or domain names or anything that you want to use. Uh, so you know you can have you know multiple sites that each have their own content, their own pages, their own users, their own security, and so on. But in a single installation, they might share something called extensions. So extensions would be installed, and these are things that allow you to uh, truly extend how the platform works. You know, so .NET Nuke isn't just uh, something that you are allowed to put add-ons on, but you can extend nearly any area of the platform without changing the core code, so you always have an upgrade path. So the most common type of extension, and an extension is just anything you can install into the platform, uh, the most common type is something called a module, and that's something you just add onto the page. This is something you would see and interact with. Uh, so this would be, examples would be a blog or a survey or just HTML-based content, um, things like that, things that you're already used to. Here's also language packs. So language packs, .NET Nuke, the language packs allow .NET Nuke to be a multilingual solution for you. So there's a, a, a wide variety of languages. I think the only one that I'm not aware of that, uh, that we might have a, a uh, a language pack for is Hindi, but like every other language, including the you know the the, the right to left and the character based languages, um, you are supported with uh, languages, so you can localize not just your static content but also your dynamic content. And then of course there is a way to change all the branding in in .NET Nuke so through what we call a skinning engine or skins. You might know these as designs or templates or themes. 
Now, no matter what we're talking about in .NET Nuke, one of the important things I want you to remember is that we do not impose any limits on you. So these limits include you can integrate with any system that has an API, and you can have as many websites as you want, as many domains as you want, as many user security roles, concurrent content editors, and so on. There are no limits. There are no additional costs to any of these things. Now, the web application framework is the part where the developers would work in. So just to kind of give you some background, I'm not going to go deeply technical here, but just to give you some background, um, you know, .NET Nuke is built from a provider model from the ground up from the very beginning. And so what that means to you is that if you need to change nearly anything in the platform, you don't have to change the core code. You know, once again, you're going to always have an upgrade path. This is something that you may or may not be used to. So if you needed to change something like how the authentication works, you don't have to change the core. You can just simply add another um, authentication provider into the mix, and then you'd be able to use it, uh, even if it's something you have to build as custom or a single sign-on or anything like that. But we do come with uh, native support for Active Directory, uh, Facebook, uh, Google, uh, Twitter, um, and, and I think Live. Uh, so you know this, this. So this bottom area, where all the small blue boxes are, you know, that provider model. If we start to work our way up, this allows our developers to use this vast API that we have for them. So they don't have to worry about reinventing the wheel on things like security or localization. They can just use existing code and work it into their own business logic. So they don't have to. Also, they don't have to worry about what's the under what the underlying providers are. So this this is how .NET Nuke saves them a ton of time. Uh, so they just they just call existing code. Now, if you are a developer on the line, um, so, you know .NET Nuke extensions are nothing more than at least one user control. So a user control is the, the simplest user interface element you can create in .NET, and it can be written in any language, any .NET language. So uh, VB and C sharp seem to be the most popular. You can use any .NET compatible language that you'd like. And your user controls or your extensions can use any type of web uh, technology that you want. So whether they're CSS frameworks or, or uh, JavaScript libraries or what have you, CSS, CSS3, HTML5, XHTML, jQuery, Silverlight, Flash, whatever it is, you can use in a .NET Nuke extension. And that includes the designs in .NET Nuke. Now, something that we have native support for is the Teller Control Suite for ASP.NET. Uh, so that's fully baked into the platform. You can use it today. And, uh, but in order to uh, develop against the Teller controls, if you're not aware, you do have to have a license from Teller, a developer license. One of the great things as being a customer of the .NET Professional Edition is that you would get an unlimited number of ASP.NET uh, licenses, ASP.NET uh, AJAX licenses for Teller to develop your .NET new solutions. So if you have, uh, you know, you can do the math. If you have uh, 10 developers on staff, you know, that's $1,000 that you just saved per developer per year. Um, so moving on, so I want to talk about designs real quick. Uh, once again, we call them uh, skins in our framework. And so a design can have any type of HTML that you want in there. So just like the, you know, the rest of the extensions, you can use HTML5, XHTML, you know, transitional, CSS3, div-based design, you know, whatever it is, um, there are no uh, limitations here. In fact, the only limitation that you're going to find when it comes to designs in .NET Duke is the fact that, uh, you know, how creative is your designer? Because your skin controls where the content areas are on the page. So you define where the, what the header looks like, what the menu looks like, where is the logo, and so on and so forth. But then you also define, as a designer, you define, hey, these are the areas that I'm going to allow my content editors to add content to. So you're in complete control of the layout and of the branding and of the sizing and of everything. So your designers control that, not your content editors. Now what that does is uh, protect you, but it also allows the designers, once again, to allow uh, to tell the uh, content owners where they can add modules. So these uh, areas, there are uh, things on this page that we call content panes. And in fact, having at least one content pane in the layout is the, in the only requirement that a designer has to work with. They have to have at least one of these areas in the page. And these areas are nothing more, if you uh, know HTML, these areas that are called content panes are nothing more than a table cell or a div or a span. Now, this is what .NET Nuke looks like pretty much when you install it out of the box. So this is the default layout. So this is like your starting point, and, and you can change the content, and, you know, or you can start from a blank template if you want. Uh, but this is what it looks like out of the box. But you, once again, are only uh, you're only limited by creativity. So once you get your designers involved, you can do any type of layout that you want. So here's some fun ones that came from like a, a design contest that we had a, a year or two ago. 
And then, you know, you can have your design be responsive. It can be adaptive to the multiple platforms and browsers out there. So whether we're talking about uh, um, your handheld devices or tablets or, you know, making sure things look right on your uh, desktop. And then we can see what some of our customers have done. So here's Coinstar. You can you know, see that they have a nice, uh, vibrant uh, type of design going on here. Uh, the city and county of Denver. Uh, so they have a very informative website, and they do a great job of laying things out to where you can discover content very easily. And then the higher education area, you know, the University of New Orleans, New Orleans, they were able to, uh, we have a case study for them actually where you, know, you can read about how they were able to serve, uh, after uh, Hurricane Katrina, they were able to serve something like 250 websites out after uh, and spend this, uh, their new solution out in two weeks. Uh, so that's a pretty substantial uh, uh, you know, case study that you should check out on our website. Then there's Kingston.com. If anybody out there has bought memory or anything like that before, uh, you probably are aware of Kingston. They have a, a very great design here. Really cool to see that. And then Hilton Grand Vacation. So, you know, if you're booking travel, you know, they have a nice .NET website, but they are also taking advantage of our mobile capabilities. So you can see they have a mobile version of their website that's uh, you know, going to be sufficient for handheld devices. Now that's all I'm going to be talking about there. We're going to move on now to the, uh, to the product demonstration. Uh, so give me a, just a second. I'm going to switch over to bring up my desktop, or excuse me, my demonstration site. Um, so right now we should be looking at our demo site. And so um, if you can see the demo site now instead of the slide deck, I'm going to ask you one more time if you could just do me a favor and raise your hand in the GoTo meeting uh, or you go to webinar software. Excellent. Thank you so much. At least I didn't put you to sleep. So that's good news. All right. So we're going to go ahead and use the website. Right now, if we look at the website, we have a, a nice read-only view. We have a home page with some interesting uh, kind of placeholder content. So this is this beginning or getting started template is really great for you uh, because it gives you an idea of how you may or may not want to lay out your content and how you can also reuse some of the um, visual elements that come out of the box within the design uh, framework that uh, is in this uh, .NET Nuke. And so you have a lot of great examples of how you can lay out content. And in fact, for those of you that might be designers or developers on the phone right now uh, or on the webinar, you can see here that we have a nice uh, uh, you know, template, styling template here, we, or style guide rather, where you can see how you can reuse some of the built-in styling. Um, now, if you didn't notice though, we weren't able to edit anything. So we're going to go ahead and just do a tour of the uh, professional edition features. So the first user I'm going to log in as, I just click to log in here. The first user I'm going to log in as is, some, is one that's known as the host user, the super user. And this is the most privileged user in the platform, so they can do everything. Um, so we're going to start with this one. And you can see now a lot of things have changed. We have this nice control panel that's at the top of the page. It stays docked with us. Um, you know, if we move throughout the site, it's still going to be there with us. And if we choose to start to edit things, we can simply go into an edit mode. And um, then we can start to edit things around the page. So this control panel is your central area for editing content on your site. And when I chose to go into edit mode, now I can edit any module on the page that I have permissions to edit. So right now I am uh, somebody that is a uh, um, content editor. Um, so I'm able to, uh, uh, because I have permissions, I can edit all the modules on this particular page. And so now on these uh, particular modules, I have the ability to either edit content or I can go to the various settings for the module or I can even move it around. In fact, if let's go ahead and go to the Contact Us page, and if I go to Edit Mode here, I can choose, maybe I didn't want the Message Us to be on the uh, uh, on the right side, I can go ahead and choose to move it over here, and now I can move the Reach Us over to the right, and so I can very quickly and easily, if I have permission to do so, change things around to be the way that I want it. You know, I can just keep doing this all day and get things exactly where I want them. Um, so um, that's kind of edit mode, and in edit mode we can get to things like page settings, we can preview the site you know, for our mobile preview and so on. Um, we can also add new pages to the site, uh, we can add more modules to the site, so these are things that we're going to do in just a few moments. And then we have some things for common, uh, uh, some common tools, so we can clear the cache, we can jump from site to site, we'll be doing that in a little bit. And then as a host user, Excuse me, I didn't mean to click through on that, but we can see that uh, there's a bunch of options in that host menu. Uh, so we have not only the common options here, but also some of the more advanced options that were available to us. And then if you were to click through, you can see the options down here below. So as a professional edition customer, not only do you have things like web, web farm support, health monitoring, application integrity, you have a whole host 
of features that are available to you as a professional mission customer, including a comprehensive search crawler. So we'll actually crawl your site and all your documents on there, and you'll have a central area to serve out search results from not just this website, but any other website that you um, have specified as your web properties. Uh, there's, of course, the things that you would take, in, uh, take for granted as a customer, things like technical support, support tickets, your license management, knowledge base, software and documentation downloads, and so on. And we're going to get into site groups in a little bit. But uh, things like web farm support are very, very important. Health monitoring and application integrity, these allow you to basically make sure that your site's always up. And if it's not, we'll let you know. And there's a lot of security features that are built in that allow you to see what things are going on, proactively see if you uh, have the latest and greatest uh, that secure platform of .NET New. And if you ever don't, you can just, um, you'll obviously get an email from us as a customer, but you can always go to the security center and, and get specific directions on, on how to get more secure. Now, the other, th the other menu here is the admin menu. And so I clicked through on that again just to show you the, the large icons here. But um, just like the host menu, we have the ability for you to see the, uh, the most common things that you'd be getting to, but also the more advanced. Um, so these are areas that you'd only be able to get to if you have permissions to get to. Um, so the host menu allows you to change the configuration of that menu. And then the admin menu allows you, as a site, somebody that runs a site, to manage a single website. So this is where we come to manage our users or, or files in the file system, see what uh, different types of events are happening. Um, we can also en enable our Google Analytics through the Pro feature. Um, and then there's also the SharePoint connector. Now, so these are, I just kind of glossed over some of the high level features that are part of professional edition, but we're going to start to show you some that are a lot more exciting by creating some content on the site. So one of the things that as we move to the site that you may not have seen is Awesome Cycles, you know, it has the ability, you know, this uh, pretend organization called Awesome Cycles, uh, they build mo uh, uh, bicycles and they allow you to purchase them and everything, but uh, you don't see a whole lot about locations here. So I'm going to create a locations page just briefly, and so I'm going to use my control panel to do that. I'm going to add a new page. And when I add a new page, I'm going to have the ability to do all kinds of things. So very easily, I can change anything about the metadata if I desire. But at the very least, I'm just going to give it a name. So I'm going to call it locations. And since I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and click over to permissions. And so since I'm here, I might, do the, might, I might not do this in a production environment. But right now, I'm going to say all users can see this page. And so it's that easy to make a page visible to the public. But this is also your first insight into granular permissions that's only found in the professional and enterprise edition of .NET Nuke. So you can get very specific with the permissions that you want to allow people to uh, have on your site. And you're going to see just how granular we're going to get with that in just a second. So all I've done here is I allowed all users to see this page. And if you remember, I gave it a title. That's all I've done here. And now I'm going to just click Add Page to add the page to the site. So now it, a couple things have just happened for us. The locations page is already in the menu system. I didn't have to do anything super technical or special to do that. I just clicked the button and it's there. And then also look at the URL. The URL is search engine and human uh, friendly. So uh, you're going to have a URL that you can work with. But let's go ahead and start to manage this page. So we're going to go ahead and enter edit mode. So you can see that this default template uh, uh, for a new page it already sets an HTML module down for us, but you can create any uh, page templates that you want. So if you have a specific type of maybe product information template that has like six different modules um, with some pre-filled content, um, you can create that template right here within Nuke. And when you create a new page, you simply select it, and those modules will be in the right places with the right design and maybe with some pre-filled content for you every time. So it'll save you a ton of time. But we're going to go ahead and change the title for this module because we don't want to say enter title. We're going to change it to something a little bit more meaningful. So I went into the settings for the module here, and I'm going to call it locations. Right? So just like we can give pages names, we can give any module a name. And then since I'm here, here's more granular permissions. So .NET Professional Edition gives you the granularity of allowing you to assign view permissions to a module, but also the edit content permissions without giving somebody the permission to do something a little bit more dangerous, like maybe accidentally deleting the module from the page. Uh, so we can allow people to edit content without giving them full control of the content area. Now, well, that's all I've done here. So I've allowed people to do uh, marketing, uh, excuse me, I've allowed the marketing, marketing management team to edit content. Uh, and then I've also allowed the, um, or excuse me, I've also uh, assigned a different title to the module. Now I'm going to go ahead and just save these changes. So I'm going to go ahead and update. And so now we have locations as the title. And let's go ahead and edit the content. 
.NET Nuke has a what you see is what you get or a WYSIWYG editor. So as we were to uh, you know, manage content, it has everything that you want. Spell check, you know, robust table support, the ability to insert uh, images and, and uh, you know, use templates. So for example, if I were to use a template manager, I can go ahead and use or reuse a content template that I've created at some point and just go ahead and insert it. So that could save me time if I have some sort of uh, complicated HTML that I want to use over and over again. And what you're going to see right up here, a blue box is about to appear. This will automatically save your changes while you're working. I, I'm, it's undoubtedly happened to you numerous times on any website where you save, you're, you're working on something for a while and you get called off to do something, you come back, you, save, you go to save your changes and you just lost an hour of work. We're going to save that for you automatically. Now I'm going to go ahead and just save this content. Oh, and by the way, that's saved to an offline location, so you don't have to worry about that automatic saving to show to your, your website visitors. Uh, now I'm going to finish building out this page by adding another module to the page. So uh, we have all kinds of modules that come pre-installed for you, but I'm going to just go to uh, the HTML Pro module. This is only available in the uh, Professional and Enterprise Edition. So I just dragged it down onto the page, just laid it down where I wanted it, and then I'm going to I'm going to do exactly the same thing I did at the previous module. We're going to give it a different title here. So I'm going to call Contact Us. And uh, I'm not going to give any permissions to this module. I'm just going to go ahead and save that. And let's go ahead and edit the content here. So I'm going to change the content. Uh, we're going to use the template once again. So I'm going to just go ahead and use the template manager. And we're going to choose Contact Us and insert it. And there we go. So we have some pre-filled content. You can see it just saved to a temporary location. And we can go ahead and save it for real. So right now, we've been working live on the site. Uh, so all of our content changes, when we save them, they've been live for everybody to see. But um, in most production environments, we don't want that. We want somebody to approve this before a visitor sees it. So we'll want to enable workflow. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and go to the settings for this module. Uh, and we're going to enable workflow for this locations module. And so if we go to the last settings here, this is where we can change things like the number of versions we save in history, how autosave works and then we can choose to create a workflow. So I'm going to go to Manage Workflows, and we're going to create one real quick. So I'm going to add a new one. We just call this Marketing Approval. And um, Marketing must approve content before visitors can see it. So that's what my workflow is going to do. So I just gave it a, a title and a description and a quick update, and now I can create a workflow. So right now we have an indirect publish. Uh, in order to have a true workflow, I'm going to add a state review here. And so I just click Add New State, and I give it whatever title I want. So I'm just going to say Marketing Review, because this is when I want the marketing department to, department to review it. And then I'm going to give the marketing management team. So these are, by the way, these are security roles I created before the demo. You can have security roles of any names and naming convention that you want. I just happen to create some that use department names. Uh, but so you can see Marketing Management is going to be able to review the content. And then if we look down below, we can say, you know what, and I want them to be notified. Um, you know, that's, some, that's just an option that you can choose. And I'm going to go ahead and update. And so now we have a one-step review cycle for a workflow. So we've just created a workflow literally in less than a minute. And now we can go ahead and use it. So we're going to go ahead and choose it. And at this point, go ahead and use all the defaults. But you can see we can apply the workflow to, the, um, to, the entire, to just this module or the entire page or the entire site. And we can choose how this workflow is or is not overridden as well. But we're going to just choose to update this, so I have saved the defaults for the rest. But we just enabled workflow in just a few moments. So up until this point, I've been using a very privileged user account, just uh, for simplicity. But now we're going to log off. And now I'm going to log back on as another user. Uh, so I'm going to log on as a user that's just a, basically a low-level marketing uh, user. So this person's name is uh, Tracy. And when Tracy logs in, she has a different experience. So you can see this is obviously a different user. So you can see she has a different avatar. If she comes to different areas of the site, you see that control panel goes away, but it's here. Uh, but when we come, so she can't do a whole lot except for on the locations page. On the locations page, she can't edit the contact us area, but she can do something here on locations. So that's just how granular you can get on your site. If you desire, you can allow somebody to edit just one section on a single page throughout your entire website, or you can allow them to edit entire sections or an entire page. It's completely up to you, and it's all done through checkboxes. So I'm going to go ahead and edit content. We're going to say uh, Tracy has to add an image here to make this a little bit more exciting. And so we're going to go ahead and uh, enter a couple times. We're going to center align it, and let's go ahead and upload an image. So uh, right there. We're going to upload an image here using our image manager. 
And uh, so we have some folders already in here. We would choose the images folder. Maybe there's not anything here I want to choose from, so you can have an image gallery if you desire. But I'm going to choose to upload one I already have. So I have this nice bicycle banner here. I'm going to go ahead and upload that. And now it, it automatically gives me a preview of it. If I want to change anything about any of the attributes of it, I can. So I'm going to say cycling uh, banner for the title for it, for alt text, and just insert it. Uh, so you can see here that it inserted it. I have a nice preview going on here and so on. But down below, it shows me that, hey, workflow's in use, and here's the state that it was in, and status that it was in, and what do you want to do now? When you save it, do you want to lock the content and come back to it later, which you can do, or do you want to publish the changes now? And if we choose to publish the changes now, what that'll do is kick this into the workflow process that we just created because we're using that marketing approval workflow. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and save this, and every step of the workflow allows you to give feedback. So I'm going to say, I'm going to say um, added the image as requested. And I'm going to go ahead and add the comments. So now we have that content added to the page. Now right now it looks like that content's live, just like the previous change, but that's only because I'm a content editor. Um, it's showing me the impact that I am or am not having on the page. So this in-context content editing that you've been seeing so far, this allows you to save a ton of time because you're not in a silo in some back office software somewhere or some desktop software and trying to imagine how it's looking in the web browser. You see it right here, right here, live. And so you don't have to worry about all those things. It saves you a ton of time. And if I want to see how this looks um, you know, without being approved, we can simply exit edit mode. So you can see how you can toggle that on and off as a user. In one click, we can go ahead and see what's going on. But Tracy just edited content, and that was in work post. So her supervisor just got an email because of that workflow we just created. And so her supervisor's name is Lynn, and Lynn just got an email saying, hey, some content just got uh, added to the site. And so either she went straight to the page, she clicked on a link in the email, or so on. Uh, but you can see that because of the permissions, the only permissions that have been assigned in the site are the ones that you just saw me do, she has very much the same experience that uh, Tracy had. Uh, so on here, she not only can edit content, but she can also, because she's part of the workflow approval process, approve or reject the content. Um, and then there's also my work option. So my work brings up another thing. Um, you know, she got emailed um, as a notification. There's also a notification center, so she can come in here and see that there's content pending. Uh, and then also anywhere on the site that she has added content permissions, she can see my work. So this allows her to save a ton of time because she can come in here once, and if there's like 50 different things that she needs to review and approve or deny, she can see 50 links here no matter where she is on the site. So she approves one, goes to my work, clicks on the next one and keeps moving on throughout the site, saving a ton of time. Uh, but while we're here, we're going to go ahead and go to edit content. And so if there was a, like a typo here that I needed to fix, I can fix that real quick. Uh, maybe uh, maybe uh, this person forgot to bold franchises like they're supposed to, so we can just bold that real quick. Um, but right while we're here, what we can do is we can go to version tracking. So we have the content preview, see how this is going to look on our site. And then we also have version tracking. So uh, this would be a lot more uh, populated if we uh, uh, had more activity going on on our site. But what this allows us to do is either roll back or preview previous versions of content. We can delete a version of content if for some reason we never want it to be reapplied to our site. Or we can check the checkboxes like you just saw me do and choose to compare them. So we can see a side-by-side -side comparison of the pending changes that are about to be applied to the site. And not only this way, but also we can take a look at the HTML. So uh, for those of you that want to review or need to review the HTML, you can see things that are inserted, modified, or deleted, or deleted uh, very quickly, very easily, and uh, once again, saving you a ton of time. So we're going to go ahead and just save these pending changes. But when we do, what do we want to do with it? Do we want to uh, reject the content or approve it? Just for simplicity today, we're going to go ahead and approve the content. And once again, we can get feedback. Uh, looks great. And high, oops, highlighted franchises. So now we're getting uh, a nice uh, dialogue going on. If we were to go back into edit content, we can see under version tracking the various things that have been happening. Uh, so th this content is now live. So if we were to, um, by the way, the workflow details, we can see all the content, uh, the, 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 the comments rather, that have been going on. And that's also in the notifications. But now if we go back to close the edit mode and see, we can see exactly what's live now. So that content is indeed live, and we can further demonstrate that by logging in. So you can see here that the content just went through an approval process. Uh, Tracy made the changes. 
her supervisor, Lynn, who came in here and approved them, and now our public can see it. So nothing uh, uh, nefarious just got added to our website. All right, so uh, we're going to go ahead and show you something else here. So up until this point, uh, we've been working with a single website, but one of the most important things today is mobile. Now we have a ton of resources, including a couple of webinars and a white paper on our website that will give you a lot more information about mobile, but we're going to go ahead and create a new website. And for the purposes of today, we're going to go ahead and create a website that's a mobile site. And so if I go to the control panel, I can go to site management and as a host user, and I can see a number of sites that are currently installed on my system. So I'm going to go ahead and add a new website. I'm going to call this m.awesomecycles.log. And so I'm creating a mobile site, so I'm using another domain name. You can use whatever naming convention that you want. And I'm going to say that this is called, the site's called Awesome Cycles Mobile. Now, when I create this new site, I do have the ability to choose templates. So we have a mobile website template that's only available to use a customer. And so we can choose that mobile website template and choose uh, create site. So in the background, all kinds of crazy things are happening that are very, very technical that you do not have to worry about. So as, but as an end user, now we're on our new website. It has a nice getting started uh, prompt that comes up. But we're on our new website, and we can see that uh, we're on um, m.awesomecycles.log. So we're able to come in here very quickly and uh, be able to uh, create a website on the fly. Now I'm going to go ahead and log in. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, log in back as the host user again. So we are logged in on our mobile site. Now mobile has a lot of features. One of the things that you're going to see here is if I were to resize this, um, we can go ahead and show that this mobile uh, design, this mobile template is very responsive. So right now it's very much in kind of a uh, uh, tablet type of dimension, but we can go ahead and resize this. So we can say, you know what, let's see how it looks as a, a you know, a handheld device looks at it, so we can uh, it will automatically respond to the different form factor that we're looking at the side in and uses best practices with a touch-friendly menu and then so on. Uh, so you have a best uh, best practice example of uh, uh, you know, responsive design in .NET Nuke, and that comes to you. All right. So the other thing is the mobile previewer. So this previewer is great because it allows you to see the site as other devices can see it. So you can choose and add to this list as you see fit. So if we wanted to see the site as an iPhone, we can go ahead and choose to see the site as an iPhone and still interact with it. Maybe we want to go to landscape mode, we can still do this. Um, there's some tablet options in here and so on, and you can once again add any type of uh, uh, device in here that you want to test. So this, once again, saves you a ton of time because you don't have to be the guy that's constantly going to the office next to you because you have an iPhone and the guy next door has an Android phone and you have to keep trying to figure out how things look or don't work. Um, so this saves you a ton of time there. Now, uh, the next thing I want to show you is it's great that we created a mobile site, but how do we get people to it? Um, so I'm going to go back to the host menu and or actually I'm going to go over here and jump back to our, our, our public site here, or desktop site rather. And so I'm using the tools menu to do that. So very quickly I can just jump over there. And uh, now I'm over here, and I'm now I'm going to go ahead and choose to create a site redirection uh, from my desktop site. So I'm going to come into the advanced set, uh, settings here and go to site redirection management. And in here, I have a few different options. Uh, one of the ones is to just create a generic mobile website, website redirection. We could do that, but there's not really any options, so it's not very fun. So I want to show you a more fun way to do this because it's going to highlight a lot of capabilities that you, as an average end user, you, if you have the permissions, you can do all this yourself. You don't have to get you know, super technical people involved to do this. So we're going to go ahead and choose to create a new website redirection using the advanced settings. And I'm going to call this one iPhone. And uh, we can choose how we're redirecting. So we have a lot of options. We can mix and match this if you want. But just to keep things simple today, I'm going to choose to redirect from site to site. And as you can see, my mobile site's already here in the drop-down list. And then how do I want to redirect based upon what rule? Do I want to redirect all mobile phones? all tablets, or both mobile phones and tablets, or do you want to uh, you know, do something more advanced? So we're going to do something more advanced. I'm going to choose a capability here. So I'm going to say, you know what, if it's a mobile phone, and if that value is true, we're going to go ahead and add this. And then we're going to say, you know what, uh, if it's also the platform name is iPhone, or iOS rather, we're going to go ahead and uh, uh, match this up. So what this basically is, just a couple clicks, I created a rule that matches iPhones iOS is the platform name in mobile, so this doesn't match any iPads, just iPhones, and go ahead and save it. And so now I can start to build up a, a hierarchy of, of rules. So I can go ahead and say, you know what, I'm going to create another one as for Android phones. 
And just to keep things simple, I'm going to do the same redirect, but just that we're going to create a different role. And we're going to say if it's mobile, because we don't want to match tablets for this particular rule. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and say if it's true. And this one's going to be a lot easier because the platform name is going to be closer to the top. We don't have to scroll. We're going to say Android. And go ahead and add that rule. And so now this rule is if it's a mobile phone and if it's using Android, it matches my Android phone's rule. And so this is great because what this allows me to do as an end user, I just created a website redirection. So when people come to my desktop site on either an iPhone or an Android phone, they're automatically redirected to my mobile site that I just created. So that's, that makes things super simple for you. Within a few clicks, we just built this up. Now the other great thing about this is if you're using your um, you know, website analytics and, and when I created this rule six months ago, iPhone was like 80% of my mobile traffic, but now Android phones is like 75% of my mobile traffic. I might want this rule to come up above iPhone, so I can just simply drag this up there and change my rules, I'm done. Um, so that way you know, I'm not unnecessarily putting people through the wrong rule over and over and over and over again. I can save some efficiency in my web server or have some efficiency in my web server. Um, now the last thing here is uh, if I, if I uh, one of the things I might want to do is you know on my home page I have this banner here. I might want to share content across to my mobile site. That'll make things a lot easier for me as somebody who edits or manages content for the website. So if I change content here, I, maybe I want it to change on my mobile site. But in order to do that, we're going to need to use another professional edition feature called Site Groups. And so if I go into Site Groups, I can group together these websites. Uh, so that way I can either share users or I can share content or both across these sites. So the first thing I need to do is give this group a name, so I'm going to call it Awesome Cycles. Um, grouping of Awesome Cycles branded oops, sites. There we go. And go ahead and create the site group. And now I can go ahead and say, you know what, I want to, the members of the site group include this Awesome Cycles website. And if I want to copy users, I can, but uh, for right now I'm just going to keep things simple and uh, I'm going to just update that group. So now I just went ahead and created a site group that includes both of those websites. So we have the master site, that's Awesome Cycles desktop site, and it also includes the Awesome Cycles mobile site. Now, uh, what that allows me to do, if I jump back to my mobile site, I'm going to go ahead and choose it. Now over here, what I can do is, you know what, now when I add a module, I'm going to choose add existing module. So this allows me to add an existing module from this site, or I can do it from my other site now. So I'm going to choose my desktop site, and I'm going to just choose my uh, home page because I'm going to grab that uh, uh, banner from the from the top, which is uh, Welcome to Awesome Cycles, and I want to put that maybe on the top of here. So I'm just going to add it there so you can see I have that content from that other site. So I just dragged it onto the page, and now when I make uh, changes to this content, it's, those changes are going to be reflected in both places. So if you remember, I'm going to go ahead and just jump back to the other site. Here's that banner right there. And let's go ahead and uh, edit this uh, content real quick. So I'm going to go ahead and edit the content. And just so you know, I don't have it put this particular content to workflow, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, add something in here. We love our, well, may, well actually, you know what, maybe, uh, yeah, we love our customers. There we go. So I added a little piece of text there. I'm going to go ahead and save it. And so you can see that reflected here. This is a live change because remember it's not in workflow. But now if we jump back to our, our mobile site, oops. Now we jump back to our mobile site, you can see that that change is reflected here as well. Um, so our content is shared across the sites. Um, so that's kind of the end of today's demonstration. Um, you know, there's plenty more to show you and I'm going to jump back to our, our slides to kind of highlight those real quick so we can get some questions. All right, so uh, some, of the, some of the things, and this isn't an extensive list, but some of the things that we couldn't get to today include the document library module. Uh, so that's a document management solution that allows you to manage your documents, put them through uh, approval processes, track them, categorize them, have multiple views, and so on. Uh, so it's a, it's a pretty robust solution to allow you to manage uh, digital assets, basically on your .NET new site. Um, there's also a commerce module. It's a, a very flexible module that integrates directly into your content, so that allows you to uh, be able to have kind of like a PayPal type of experience on your website, and so you can uh, take orders over the phone or on your website, you can have discounts, and, and so on. And it's a pretty great module. Um, so the other things are, are some folder providers. So there's a UNC file share 
pull-up provider, uh, Windows Azure pull-up provider, Amazon S3, so you can have cloud folders or file system folders in your organization that just show up transparently uh, to your content editors if you have permissions to see them. So they don't care or know, and neither does a visitor, that these files are coming from some other location. They just do. Uh, I mentioned web form support, but there's a, a whole lot we could go into about talking about how .NET Nukes uh, uh, supports you in your web form environment. Uh, high performance caching, so uh, there's, um, and it's not just high performance, but it's also granular caching. So you can get, just like permissions with a, a particular user, you can get uh, very specific with not only how you uh, cache um, information on your pages or your modules, but also where. So you can cache in the database or the file system or in memories. Memories are the fa fastest. Uh, but to the, the really powerful thing in there is being able to cache an entire page. So you can uh, very granularly fine-tune the performance on your .NET new site. Um, I actually did get to site groups, but I didn't get to single sign-on, how, how it shares users across the sites. Uh, there's also a SharePoint connector. That's only an enterprise edition, though. Uh, so we have support for both documents uh, being synchronized to your .NET website, as well as list support, and then Active Directory. So uh, once again, this is an extensive list, but these are some kind of the highlights. So hopefully what I was able to show you, I mean, everything I did here was point and click, and drag and drop. So hopefully I was able to show you that everything was easy to use. Uh, obviously it was responding very, very fast. We didn't wait for anything. Uh, we were able to ensure that our, everything is high quality. So whether it's uh, who creates our design or who... Uh, uh, approves uh, our content, you know, those type of things are, are decisions that you are able to make as an organization. We do not make those for you. You can decide what's important to you and what your quality uh, um, control is like. And then there's, you know, low cost. So .NET Nuke is a low cost solution. You're going to find that out uh, just as soon as you talk to us. Um, and then you're going to have a high return on investment because of that. There is no other platform that adds more value, that has more value, that gives you more benefits for the price point that you get for .NET Nuke. Uh, so there's three different flavors of it. There's the free community edition. It's free and open source. It's deployed in hundreds of thousands of production websites worldwide. So it's a very uh, flexible solution. Um, and that uh, work, but you, your uh, support's only available through the community, through the .NET Nuke forums or the community exchange. Uh, the professional and enterprise edition are fully paid customer, or excuse me, fully supported paid commercial solutions. So um, they are built on top of the community edition. So you'd get community edition plus all these other features that are built for large and mission critical or business critical websites. Uh, so things like granular permissions, SharePoint connector, workflow, mobile, um, pretty much most of the things you saw today. Uh, and you get an unlimited no amount of online technical support from the new corporation. So uh, uh, these are, are uh, you know, so what you were looking at today was a professional edition. There are some add-on services that you can take advantage of as well. So there's Elite Support. Uh, so Elite Support is above and beyond the unlimited online technical support. This allows you to have unlimited telephone-based support. Uh, you're guaranteed a quicker response time, so there's a, a shorter SLA. Um, you get a one-time installation upgrade support, so we'll upgrade your site and install it for you. And then also something that's not there is uh, you'll get the source code for the professional or enterprise bits, depending on which version that uh, you are subscribed to. <clears throat> Pardon me. So there's also developer support services. Um, the name is, is slightly misleading. It's not just for developers. Basically, developer support services allows you to talk one-on-one -on -one with our engineers or our experts and our own staff that talk to customers like yourselves on a daily basis. So this could be for anything that's not covered under the typical support. So we could be talking about roadmap for your development or you know, best practices for how you put your design together. Or we could be talking about you know, uh, how to best tweak your particular website for performance or search engine optimization. There could be a number of things that we talked to you about. Um, so this is available in 10-hour uh, uh, time blocks, and uh, you get this question and answer type of uh, experience. Um, so the last thing here is training. So we do have uh, unlimited online on-demand training that's uh, offered uh, on our website. So it's an uh, annual subscription. It's uh, ma managed by Chris Hammond. You may uh, recognize his name. He's a published author and the original um, uh, trainer of .NET Nuke uh, since .NET Nuke was first uh, you know, released. Uh, he's been training on .NET Nuke basically 10 years now. Uh, so um, and there's very few people that know more about it than he does. And uh, you know, so there's other flavors of training as well. So there's also on-site training where um, you can decide exactly what you want. You can have people in the room. Uh, you can get on-site training right there in your organization or custom training that uh, is done online. So you can uh, do almost the same thing, but it would be web-based. 
All right, so what we're going to do now is uh, get to your questions. Uh, if you want to contact us about Professional Enterprise Edition, there's some nice information there. We uh, have plenty more webinars that are coming up as well as ones that are pre-recorded. So feel free to uh, you know spend as much time as you want checking out all these webinars. We have some really great stuff for searching up engine optimization, social, mobile, and, and many more things. And if you want to try out .NET Nuke, uh, there is a free online demo, or you don't have to install it on your system. You just you know fill out a form, click a button, and you're on and running and you can use .NET Nuke in your own sandbox to play with it uh, to your heart's content. And then, of course, we'd love for you to uh, you know, contact us on our social networks. We're on Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Uh, we're pretty easy to find. Um, so what we're going to do now is get to your questions. So give me a moment as I kind of uh, get these open here and start to look at them. All right. <clears throat> All right, so this is a great question. Uh, so uh, this comes from somebody that says they're a financial institution, and um, and they ask, are there security risks with downloading the marketplace extensions? Um, so whenever you're introducing code to any software, there's always you know whether you're installing it in Windows or anything else, even on your phone, there's always the security risk when you're downloading and installing some sort of add-on to that uh, to that device or that platform, and, and we're, we're no exception to that. Um, so, you know, when, whenever you want to try a new extension, if you want to download it directly through the built-in methods uh, right there on your website, I would suggest doing that first on a staging environment in your organization and testing it there. And you want to do that for many reasons. Security is not the only one. You want to just make sure it works right the way you want it to. You want to make sure that it uh, does, uh, has, you know, the features work, work the way that they're, they're described. You want to make sure that uh, all the, everything that about it is, is working the way you want it to. Um, you know, so you, a lot of things I like to do is check the HTML. I want to see if it's performant. Um, you know all those type of things. So um, you know those are the type of things that you want to be worried about because remember that your website is the hub of your business asset. The last thing you want to do is put something out there that that um, is not uh, friendly to your environment. So uh, you always want to check that out. Uh, so there's always going to be a security risk with that, no matter what uh, software we're talking about. So that's a great question. Thank you. Um, does the language pack automatically change our English content to other languages? Um, so yes and no. That's a great question. So we didn't go into multilingual, but uh, you do have multilingual features available to you. So the language packs, what that does, it does two things for you. First, it will uh, change um, the, or it will change from English to the other languages all the static content in the platform. So that's things like the words login, uh, username, everything that you see that's basically an administrative label and things like that. Um, what it will also do for you though is allow you to enable what's known as dynamic content localization which shouldn't be confused with dynamic localization. It does not automatically use some service to look at the content and translate it because um, content localization is a much uh, larger topic than just you know, dynamically changing it. So the first thing is it's, uh, you know, those services that dynamically do it are, are very, very, well, they're not the greatest yet. Uh, they, they have a long way to go before they work great. Um, the other thing is content localization is not just your text-based content. It could be a whole number of things. It could be the documents on your site as well. It could be the images on your site. So um, allowing you to use the dynamic localization features allows you to basically have child sites or mirror image sites of your, your English version website so that way you can decide on a page-by-page -page basis um, you know, how you want to handle those other things that need to be localized. So uh, um, you, you have that capability. <clears throat> I think I answered, uh, so there's a follow-on to that by another person. Uh, there's talk about the fallback language support. Um, basically, if you have the fallback language, by default it's English, um, but you have the ability to change that. Ooh, I love this question. Can we uh, integrate Google Mini as a search index? You absolutely can. One of our many, many search, or excuse me, uh, um, Extension points is a search provider, so if you don't want to use a crawler that we have, and you would use a Google search appliance or some other appliance, there's many out there, um, you can do that, or even another type of search module. Uh, there's nothing to prevent you from doing that at all. Um, and I've integrated Google Mini in, in three particular websites that I can think of, so uh, you can absolutely do that. Um, Is there a responsive design template for the community edition? There's uh, a responsive design uh, skin that is created, uh, included with the community edition, but not the site template. And we'll do one more question here. Uh, 
Uh, there's a question here, can users uh, authenticate on an HTTPS site? You can um, absolutely use secure socket layer or you know, your SSL certificates in .NET Nuke, and then you can manage, you can actually do this enforcement thing where you say, uh, I want to enforce uh, secure socket layer across the site, and then on a page-by-page -page basis, you can uh, choose whether or not that page needs to be SSL, and then um, using the enforcement feature, if you choose to use it, um, you can say, you know what, if somebody's coming here and I always want this to be secure, and they try to come here on the unsecure URL, we're going to switch it. Uh, so you have those type of features in here. And at this point, we're out of time, so I want to uh, be respectful of the time that you have. There are actually quite a few other questions here, a lot of them. Uh, so um, uh, if you did not get your question answered now, I'm going to try to get with it, uh, get your question answered within the next 48 hours. And so expect an email from me directly. Um, so if you have uh, you know, any other questions, uh, use the contact information we have here. We'll be happy to talk to you and, and help get your questions answered uh, outside of this. But uh, thank you for joining us today. I, Really appreciate you spending this hour with us, and I hope you enjoyed what you saw, and enjoy the rest of your day or evening. Bye.